This is the story of a man with a dream. A man who turned a failing business into one of the biggest corporate success stories of the century and changed the face of America forever. Bo Beaufort, the man who made Wall Street rock to the tune of Jailhouse Stock. Like many great stories, this one started small. It all began in the boardroom of a steel bar manufacturing concern, where a young executive just out of business school was learning the ropes. Well, if things go on this way, we'll have to shut down the plant. It's all because of China dumping all those steel bars in the market. How can we compete? Steel bars can... Why don't we just bomb China? I mean, whatever happened to free trade? Look, there is no future in steel bars. We need to get into some other sector that can grow. Bars. Yes, Bo? Mr. Freeman? I know what we can do. Gentlemen, I submit to you that we must diversify into an area that can give us assured profits for a long time to come. Yes, Lemming said that half an hour ago. <laughs> exactly. Good point, Lemming. So what area? What, gentlemen, is America's number one product? America? How many times do I have to tell you? America's a continent with many countries on it, not one. Talking about Mexico's number one product? Marijuana. Californians. Okay, the United States, I mean. What is the number one product of the United States? Missiles? Guns. Bombs. Missiles? We can't get into missile manufacture, Bo. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about jailbirds. Prisoners, gentlemen. The one thing this country produces an endless supply of. So what's your point, Bo? Bars? Behind bars? The one service this country will need for a long, long time. Oh, this is brilliant. This is lateral thinking, boys. So, business school does do some good after all. Good. I was having moral problems about going into missiles. I'm against violence. This is ridiculous. Where are you going to get prisoners from? Nothing ever happens in this godforsaken town. Maybe. We can move to New York. No. What we do, we do in Constantinople, Kansas. And we can't do any worse than we were, so let's give this one a shot. So we're almost done building the prison. All we need now is a contract from the state government for prisoners, and I'm working on that. <laughs> Have you seen this article? It says that crime rates are falling all over the country. What? Look, how far could they fall? This is the United States. Analysts say that the upturn in the economy means that crime is set to drop even further in the months ahead. No. <laughs> It says right here, crime rates are skyrocketing. That report was wrong. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. The bad news is, your doctor was shot dead this morning. We got it, Mr. Freeman. We got the contract. Our first batch of prisoners is arriving tomorrow. Who needs doctors now? Grab your hats, boys. We're back in business. <laughs> Joe, Mike, what are you guys doing here? Were you the guys who busted a supermarket? What else do you expect us to do without a job, huh? You tell me. You know these men. Yeah, they used to work at the steel plant. You had this whole thing planned, didn't you? You brilliant That God. coincidence made Bo ponder the circular nature of life. He saw now that everything came back to you in the end. Your good deeds and your bad. 
This led to his famous move towards Eastern mysticism. It comes back to you in the end. Your good deeds and your bad. Your steel workers and your prisoners. Life is circular. The world is an illusion. Karma! Bo's dream had turned into reality. Freeman's was finally making money, but Bo had reached a higher level of consciousness. He now saw that big business had better pay back what it owed, or else. We must render unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's. We must give back to the workers what we've taken from them. Why? What? Their jobs. Are you nuts? I knew his sane spell wouldn't last long. Who's Caesar? We are not going back to steal. I'm not talking going back to steal. I'm talking about giving them their jobs while maximizing our profits. So we can show this country that big business cares. That we're about people, not profit. How? Why? You stirred my patriotic spirits, my boy. All my steel jobs go straight to you. Just don't raise those wages. My wife told her parents that I got my old job back. Forgot to mention where I'm doing it, though. Yeah. Or the pay, I bet. Strange how we're back to doing our old jobs after all this craziness. I've been reading this Eastern philosophy thing. Somehow it all makes sense. Life being a circle and all. And we are proud to name Bo Beaufort, Corporate Visionary of the Year. Oh, all right. right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I feel deeply moved. Yay. Mr. Beaufort, is it true that your prisoners are involved in telemarketing, booking airline tickets, handling credit card customer service, steel production? Yes. We're also thinking of getting into textbook assembly soon. Mr. Beaufort, Mr. Beaufort, would it be true to say that the entire economy of the United States will soon be operating out of Freeman's prisons? I wouldn't say that. We're just trying to make a living like anybody else. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's a cool job, baby. The great thing about telemarketing is that you're your own boss. You're free to work when you want to. Yeah, I know we've been doing this phone thing long enough. And yeah, we ought to go out sometime. I want to actually meet you too. It's just that I'm, uh, I'm a little tied up right now. Tell you what, uh, I'll call you back when I'm a little more uh, free. Hey, go! Just heard that GM is relocating its Winchester, Ohio plant to Asia. Go for 100 acres of prime Winchester land. We're expanding. And there was no looking back. <laughs>